I feel for you first and foremost, if you do get bullied, if you do get picked on, I think the number one key would be figuring out whether or not it is bullying or is it, is it just a one-off argument. Um, bullying by definition is targeted, ongoing, aggressive behaviour and it usually means there's an imbalance of power to some reason. So the person's either bigger than you, um, smarter than you, more psychologically, um, savvy when it comes to their words, etc. Uh, but if you do think, yes, this is bullying, this person is picking on me, the number one thing, in my personal opinion, would be to figure out, hey, have I done something to offend this person? Have, you know, did I, did I say something? Did I bump into them the wrong way? Have they heard I've said something? And because we found out that nearly 74% of cases when finding out someone's getting bullied, when the person's actually just asked them, hey, um, you're bullying me or you're picking on me, you're teasing on me, uh, they actually found out that the other person didn't realise they were doing that. They were having a bit of a joke, having a bit of a laugh. So, hey, 74% of it can cut down that way. The next thing to say, like, if the person says, you know, yeah, you annoyed me, I'm just asking them why. Like, have I done something to offend you? And again, nine times out of ten, yes, you did this sort of thing. Get aside, full apologies, hey, I did not mean to do that, or look, I didn't mean it at the time, but looking back, I really regret it. I, I honestly apologise. Could we move on from this? It sounds a lot easier to say um, than it is to do, but I tell you what, nine times out of ten, when a student gets someone aside, they apologise remorsefully and generally, uh, the other person will accept their apology and they'll find that the relationship goes on a lot better. But in most cases, bullying happens because the other person's done something to offend them or show disrespect in some way. I'll take a step back from the actual emotion itself and say one of the keys to figuring out what emotions are and how to get through emotions is clearly identifying what the emotion is. Uh, a classic example is I went to uh, one of the largest boys and girls schools in uh, Sydney and I asked them to say uh, what anxiety was, what depression was, and I said, can you please describe the word without, describe how you feel without using one of those words. And anxiety was a classic example. One of the first ones that came up was, I feel overwhelmed. Well, if someone comes up to you and says, I've got anxiety, nine times out of 10, we don't know how to help them. But if someone comes up and says, I feel overwhelmed, or I feel like I have too much on my plate right now, or I feel stuck, you're a lot more qualified to actually help that person go through. Like, hey, can I take some things off your plate? You might be saying no to some things. We have to prioritize. Um, can I help you? So clearly identifying the emotion, the proper emotion, down to its core, without just one word, but a full sentence, can really help you get through that. If you honestly think, I'm really angry, I don't know how to get through it, ask yourself, why do I feel that way? Uh, and then ask yourself what the emotion is. So maybe it's, I feel really stressed out all the time because I have unfair expectations. That's one of the biggest reasons for anger in this generation. I'm angry because I had certain expectations in one of my areas of life, whether it's relationships or studies or family. I felt like my life was meant to go this certain way and my expectations have not been met, therefore I'm angry. Well, if that's the case for you, you've got one of two options. Either one, get some more realistic expectations. Just get some fair expectations. Hey, nothing's perfect. Let's just say that you didn't get 100%. Well, did you study every day? <laughs> like, are, are you doing things to actually get there? Number one, change expectations. Maybe I want to get 60, 70%. Okay, and the next one is, once you have a fair expectation, is, is what I'm doing right now projecting me towards that expectation? A fair question would be, are you studying every day? Do you have a study party? Are you, do you have a tutor? And once you put those things into place, you'll feel as though you're moving towards that expectation, and you'll find that sometimes the anger in some cases, anxiety and depression will actually leave because you actually feel like you've got a happy expectation. If that's it for you, that's awesome. If it's not, jump on Google and say, what does anger mean? And start asking yourself some more questions, like how can I describe this emotion better than just using one word? Everyone is different. However, the way what you let other people get away with, you teach people how to treat you by what you let them get away with. And you might not like to think it, but if you let someone treat you bad and continue the friendship, you're telling them that that's okay. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. But if you're like most of us, and it's not okay, you do need to talk to them and say, look, for our friendship to continue, um, I need to have this chat. This thing keeps coming up into my mind, and I really need to have this chat about it. 
Are you really good with this extent? Do you need to feel as like I can get this emotion out of me? Do you completely understand? And after I've told you, you can talk back to me and we can move through this. But you need to set up the parameters on what it is to be a friend with you and how that looks. Everyone is different, so don't let anyone say that's weird or whatnot, because everyone is different. Every relationship is different. You need to have those clear expectations.